you will eat your vegetables and you will like them. Ryan Gutekunst did exactly what the Green Bay Packers often do and pick your favorite, least favorite first round pick of the NFL draft. Good morning and thank you for enjoying it with a six pack, the Scotty six pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports, Badgers, Packers, Brewers, Bucks, and beyond six days a week. I'm your host, Kendrick Stumbris. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kendrick Stumbris, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. It is the NFL draft, and no, we didn't do a huge draft preview. You may have heard me on friend of the show, Noah Clark, friend of the show, Sam Jamini's podcast, doing a mock draft this week before the action got rolling. And in that mock draft, the Packers took an offensive lineman. Uh, took an offensive lineman who I kind of figured would be an interior offensive lineman at the next level. It was not Jordan Morgan, who the Green Bay Packers selected 25th overall last night. And there were some Packers fans who really wanted to see a defensive player go off the board at that spot for the Packers. Maybe a Cooper DeJean, maybe a Kool-Aid McKinstry. Maybe an edge you're in Cooper. None of them are gone. None of them are off the board. And there, there is nothing more eat your vegetables than taking an offensive lineman in the first round. Because especially for offensive linemen who can play on the exterior, who can play at tackle, the rate at which NFL front offices can successfully identify top end talent is very high. NFL executives are better at identifying first round worthy offensive tackles than basically any other position. The drop off after the first round for offensive line talent, especially at tackle is very significant. This is a very Packersy pick, a very Packersy pick in a number of senses. One, it is the eat your vegetables pick. It is you will have this and you will like it. Two, is Jordan Morgan's versatility. Jordan Morgan, the offensive lineman out of Arizona, the Wildcats, has the potential to play four positions on the offensive line. At least that is what. Brian Gutekunst wants you to think that's what Brian Gutekunst apparently thinks is that aside from center Jordan Morgan can play anywhere on that offensive line. He has played a lot on the offensive line during college in a lot of different places. He has three years of starts under his belt. A lot of them at tackle, a lot of them at right tackle, a lot of them at left tackle. He he can play a little bit of any, anywhere. And that is something that clearly this Green Bay Packers front office values. Ryan Wood of USA Today and WFRV put out a note on the website, formerly known as Twitter, last night that observes just how Brian Gutekunst has built this offensive line. And it's that he has two linemen that can play all five positions. Zach Tom, chief among them, right, who has played a significant amount of time at right tackle, but it seems that the Packers are signaling that his Best position might be center. Jordan Morgan can play four. This is an unconventional way to build an offensive line. It, it kind of reminds me of when the Wisconsin Badgers football team and its offensive line was firing on all cylinders, and it really, really valued that versatility. Another point here is that it has the ability to push competition on the offensive line itself in a way that would not otherwise be expected for starters on the offensive line. It's very hard to get players to move inside from outside. Very hard to get players to move from tackle to guard. And we, we saw this, we remember this with Elton Jenkins. He had been playing at right tackle for so long, but he is an excellent, excellent, excellent guard. But guards aren't paid like tackles in the NFL. Like guards lately have been have been getting paid. 
they have with with the advent of NFL defenses really, really pushing for upfront talent on the interior defensive line. These interior offensive linemen are becoming more valuable, but traditionally speaking, they're not valued as, as highly as offensive tackles are. The money's at tackle, but if you can push a player by saying, we have another guy who can take your spot at right tackle. We think he can play just as well as you. Are you going to stick firm and say, no, you're just a right tackle and you're going to be a backup in the league? Or are you going to be comfortable shifting to another position on the line? That's something Jordan Morgan might be able to reasonably do with Zach Tom here. The money for Zach Tom is in staying at right tackle. The money for Rashid Walker is in staying at left tackle. But if Jordan Morgan has the ability to push either and or both of those guys, it has the ability for Green Bay to end up putting its best five on the field, regardless of position. Now, that's not to say that you want to put somebody who is a bona fide stud at tackle and just shove them inside because you can. But if that guy can play inside, and it appears a guy like Zach Tom certainly can, it appears a guy like Jordan Morgan certainly can, you, you're setting yourself up for success. You, you are injury-proofing your offensive line as well. And yeah, shifting some of these guys around is tough. Doing some of these um, positional switches is difficult. Positional converts out of the draft is difficult. But it appears that Green Bay at least thinks is at least prepared to give Jordan Morgan a shot at proving that Jordan Morgan can play at tackle. When you look at his athletic measurables, and I'm not even talking about Raz score here as much because Jordan Morgan didn't do agility testing, which is really the thing that Green Bay is going to value most, particularly when evaluating these offensive tackles. They really, really, really value your ability to do the three-cone drill and do it quickly. When you look at his measurables otherwise, though, very, very, very quick 40-yard dash, 20-yard split, 10-yard split, some really great broad jump numbers, which is something that um, it is proven to be What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, proven to correlate with offensive line success is those broad jump numbers. The, the one number that sticks out is at six foot five, Jordan Morgan is a little bit short for a tackle. Pretty short for a tackle. With arms just under 33 inches long, 32 and seven eighths. It's a little bit short for an offensive tackle. But Brian Balaga played at tackle for a long time for the Packers. And yes, had arms a little bit longer than uh, those of Jordan Morgan's, but was a guy with prototypically shorter arms for an offensive tackle. He never kicked it inside to guard. The Packers are willing to push the boundaries on here and say, Look, we will give you the ability to prove that you can play at offensive tackle. And if you can't, we know that you're going to be really successful at guard. We do. We have that idea. And Zach Tom kind of fits this exact mold of, of Jordan Morgan as well. Pete Doherty of the Green Bay Press Gazette pointed this out in his post-round one draft article that he published last night, saying that, you know, Zach Tom, who is six foot four and a half, has short arms. At 33 and a quarter inches. Jordan Morgan, six foot five, so a little bit taller, but has shorter arms at 32 and seven eighths inches. Quite big hands. Zach Thomas, quite small hands. Jordan Morgan's 40 yard dash time is a little bit slower. But if you can look anything like Zach Tom, obviously you have a fantastic talent there on the on the offensive line. Um there are, there are lots of folks who think that Jordan Morgan is is a great pick here, and almost, almost no one is more impressed 
seemingly than, you know, the, the GOAT himself, Bill Belichick, who said on ESPN and Pat McAfee's coverage of the NFL draft last night that, he is, he is a left tackle all the way. Jordan Morgan is a left tackle all the way. A high-quality kid, very smart, good pass protector, very athletic. And then with emphasis, he's a left tackle. I don't know if he's going to play left tackle with this team. Seems that playing at right guard might be a perfect spot for Jordan Morgan, but he has a chance to win a starting position out of camp on this offensive line or at the very least, see significant reps this season. I think it's very possible that Jordan Morgan pushes Sean Ryan for that starting right guard spot, and I wouldn't hate that. The The other conversation out of, out of last night was, well, could you, could you have gotten Jordan, Jordan Morgan somewhere else? Could you have traded back from, from where you were and, and still gotten Jordan Morgan? Because we... Some Packers fans would have wanted to see Cooper DeGene there, Kool-Aid McKinstry there. If you're going to take Jordan Morgan there, why don't, why don't you trade back and do it? I, I don't think that was an option. I, I don't. Um, Brian Gutekunst, in his uh, post-draft press conference, said that they had multiple chances to move back from 25, both to later in the first round and out of the first round. The Packers didn't feel comfortable doing that. And that's, I think, pretty clearly the right decision. Jordan Morgan would have been off the board if the Packers tried to move back. The next pick off the board was Graham Martin out of Duke. Graham Barton out of Duke, who got announced as a center. I think he's clearly an interior offensive lineman, whether that's center or guard. Uh, you had Darius Robinson go off the board to Arizona. Xavier Worthy go off the board to Kansas City. And then Tyler Garten go off. Tyler Guyton go off the board to the Dallas Cowboys at 29 at off offensive tackle. And a report from Justice Mosqueda of Acme Packing. Oh, wow. Brutal talking today of Acme Packing Company said that Baltimore, the Ravens, were expected to take Jordan Morgan had he been there. And that was the very next pick at 30. So if the Packers would have moved back five picks, all those guys would have been gone. All of those offensive linemen that clearly, clearly the Packers wanted to take. And a guy like Jordan Morgan is a guy that the Packers wanted to take more than a guy like Tyler Guyton. Tyler Guyton, who, while he is something of an athletic freak, he is huge. He has some freaky athleticism numbers. He has been playing football for like three years total. I don't mean in college. I mean total. That's not something Green Bay values. <laughs> Green Bay values some of these really, really experienced guys. And that's exactly what Jordan Morgan is. And when you're comparing Jordan Morgan up with some of the other top offensive linemen in the draft, there were only two players in this draft class that were top 10 in pass blocking and run blocking grades from PFF on the season, from pro football focus. One is Joe Alt who went, what, fifth overall, third, however early. The second is Jordan Morgan, top 10 in both pass blocking and run blocking on the season, according to PFF grades. One of only two offensive linemen in the draft. It's very impressive. I, I am impressed with the pick because I think it fits very perfectly into what the Packers want. A, a guy who fits a certain athletic mold that maybe pushes the limits a little bit on on what you want from your your physical traits, your measurables. A versatile guy who has a lot of experience at a position of high value that is not the sexiest, and that's that's pure Packers process to a T. Felt like they read the board pretty well. And if nothing better, Jordan Morgan on his conference call with the media after he got picked so that he's done a lot of studying David Bakhtiari tape. So that's that's a Packers type if I've ever heard one at all. And, and who knows? Maybe he plays tackle. Maybe he plays guard. I think ultimately, whichever he plays, 
is going to affect how we as fans evaluate this pick with hindsight. But either way, it feels like very solid process for them to get there for the Green Bay Packers to get to this point. Um, I want to talk about what the Green Bay Packers are going to do next. Because I think tonight, Friday night, day two of the NFL draft, is one of the most pivotal nights in the Green Bay Packers franchise in a long time. One of the most important nights for the trajectory of the Green Bay Packers that I can remember in recent memory. And we're going we're to tell you why after we talk to you about our friends over at TickPick because TickPick is where I get tickets to any sporting event, concert, comedy show that I want to go to. Uh, and the best part about TickPick is that you never pay fees. There's no fees, no hidden fees on TickPick. You're never going to get slapped with ridiculous fees like you do on other ticketing platforms when you buy them on TickPick. Uh, TickPick is what I use to go to Brewers games. Living here in Milwaukee, get to Brewers games very easily. The Brewers hosting the Yankees this weekend. I'll be at the game on Saturday night uh, after I watch the NFL draft Friday night tonight. And look, if, if you want get to get to that Brewer game on Saturday night, get to that Brewers-Yankees game Saturday night and really take it in, you, you can get there for pretty dang cheap on TickPick. Um, Tonight, you can get in the door for 14 bucks in the two American family field. Uh, a little bit, a little bit more pricey, starting at 31 bucks for nice 610 first pitch against the Yankees. Always a little bit pricier of a ticket and, and a free giveaway with a nice little brew crew, uh, tumbler. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. And if you use my link, uh, in the podcast description, my link that's on the screen now, you're going to save 10 bucks on your first order. Save 10 bucks on your first order for no fee tickets on TickPick. Never pay service or delivery fees ever again when you use my link in the podcast description on TickPick. Save 10 bucks on your first order and pay no fees for tickets ever again. Uh, coming up this week on the show, we're going to continue breaking down day two of the NFL draft on tomorrow's show. Then we'll return on Monday, hopefully hitting on some more Badgers transfer portal news as it hits. The Badgers hosting several uh, recruiting targets, not just transfer portal targets, but also high school targets this weekend. Uh, the Wisconsin Badgers basketball team is, uh, I had an opportunity to interview one of those targets ahead of his visit that he arrived for in Madison today. Uh, I have a piece with that interview up on Badger notes right now that is linked in the podcast description. Uh, if you want to find out who that is and uh, what he's thinking about Wisconsin, what he's thinking about his decision, uh, go find that piece in the podcast description. But before we are able to talk on tomorrow's show about day two of the NFL draft, Packers got to make some picks. And Brian Gutekunst is, is ready for a day two masterclass. In the next 59 picks, Brian Gutekunst will run the card in four times. Four picks in the next 59 selections tonight. That's a that's a pick every every 15. Packers have a lot to work with here, with a lot of high quality, high quality prospects still on the board. If you wanted a Cooper DeGene. In the first round, if you wanted a Kool-Aid McKinstry, they're still there. Not a single team of 32 was comfortable taking them in the first round. They're still there. The Packers only need to move up, what, nine spots to get there? To get up to 33 right now, if you think their preferred guy is going off there, or maybe you want Edger and Cooper, he's going to go there. Packers have a lot of draft capital to work with for, for as shiny as some of the toys were that the Chicago Bears added last night. As the Minnesota Vikings added last night, trading up twice to do it. They used a lot of draft capital to make those moves. And they don't have many picks left. 
The Green Bay Packers have a lot of picks left, and this tonight is where they have real firepower with all the talent in the second and third round. Because after today, there's going to be a significant drop-off into rounds four, five, and then, of course, six, seven. Now that you can't find quality talent there, that's a significant drop-off from what is available right now on this board. Where Brian Gutekunst has four picks in the next 59 available to him. This is why today is one of the most pivotal, pivotal nights in recent memory for the Green Bay Packers. Especially if the Packers make all four of these picks. If, if the Packers make three of these picks, even all of them make the team. If the Packers win a Super Bowl in the next three, four years, tonight is the night that we will all look back and say, the Green Bay Packers won that Super Bowl on Friday, April 26th, 2024, by nailing some of these picks because they need help in the secondary. They need help at linebacker. They probably need to draft another running back because I think A.J. Dillon is gone after this year. And maybe you go all in and you win the damn thing this year. I don't know. But the Packers need to nail some of these picks if they're going to win a Super Bowl. And with all the draft capital you have at your disposal, two nights of all nights, where some of the Packers fans, Packers commentary favorites are still on the board after the first round, you got a real shot here. You got a real shot here to choose your spot, move up, and get exactly who you are looking for. Right now, speaking of moving up, there is an interview, or not an interview, a report floating around from NFL Network that the Green Bay Packers are making calls trying to move up from where they are currently slated to pick next at 41. If they move up, I think there's a chance that it is to take somebody like Cooper DeGene, to take somebody like a Kool-Aid McKinstry. Maybe Edger and Cooper. Uh, I would like any of these guys. I, I think they would be exciting additions for a Packers secondary that really needs some help. And depending on where you want to take Cooper DeGene and where you want to put him on the field, I think it depends on what Jeff Hathley thinks of what he has in the cornerback room. Does he like the Allentines? as much as some Packers fans do? Does he think Cooper DeGene has the ability to cover the boundary as a boundary corner in the NFL? Or does he see him as more of a guy who is more valuable when he can see the entire field from a safety position and, and make plays that way? Is Rich Bisaccia banging the table for a Cooper DeGene who at Iowa made game-changing plays. And with the NFL adopting new kickoff rules this year that guarantees basically that that ball is going to be in play, Cooper DeGene back there could be a real weapon if you want to have somebody who can you know change pace with Keyshawn Nixon or share that responsibility, have them both on the field for kick returns. What about Cooley McKinstry? Packers go up and grab him, a first-team All-American, a, a hyper-athlete who was so skilled that he, for a time, tried to play both football and basketball at the University of Alabama. Football with however many national titles, a basketball team that just made the Final Four, who did practices with Nate Oates, Crimson Tide team. A dude who had a broken foot at the Combine and still ran a 4-4-7-40. That's enticing. What about Edger and Cooper? Because you need that linebacker spot. You need a linebacker spot filled. And if there's any team that's been your kryptonite lately, it, it is the San Francisco 49ers. And wow, if they don't have better linebackers than, than you, the Green Bay Packers do. One of the top linebackers available in Edger and Cooper out of Texas A&M. Ran a 4-5-40 on 
Another first team All American. I am unsure if any one of these three guys is going to be there for the Packers to take at 41. If they want one of these three guys, they might need to move up a few spots. I'm unsure. But the draft is all about this uncertainty. It's all about hitting on the uncertainty, the uncertainty about where Jordan Morgan is going to play, about what impact he's going to have on your roster. I don't know. Uh, we, we will wait and see for tonight, which we as Packers fans will remember. If and when the Green Bay Packers win their next Super Bowl, the first Super Bowl of the Jordan Love era. This night, tonight, April 26, 2024, will be the night when it happens. And stay tuned and we'll break down tomorrow's, we'll break down tonight's picks on tomorrow's show here on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. The only podcast talking all things Badgers, Packers, Brewers, Bucks, and beyond with you six days a week. I've been your host, Kedrick Summers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Summers. While you are here listening on your podcast platform of choice or YouTube, where you can find us, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. Hit the subscribe button. Really, really does help the show. Hit that like button. We've been growing a lot lately, and I want to thank you all so much for your support. Leave a 